This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Joining us today is Nick Tullock, the CEO of Voyager Life. After the company announced it has started production at two further wells, the Smith and the Nielsen wells owned by M3 Helium Core. Well, thank you very much as always, Nick. How are you, first of all? I'm very well, thank you, Mark. Good to speak to you. And how are you? Yes, very good. Thank you. Just back from a sort of a two week sort of half break, half work uh, in, the, in the UK. But yeah, back to it. But it's good to see also uh, Voyager on it as well. Last time that we spoke, I know you spoke to Pama a week or two ago post your trip, but the last time we spoke was when you were on site doing that uh, that test. Um, we saw the big flame out there. But of course, these wells here, these are different, aren't they, again? So just can you give us a bit of context around these two wells? Well, well actually, one of the wells was the one that I was actually speaking to from uh, from site. So when we did that, that, that test of uh, lighting the methane, that was actually the Smith well. Um, right. so that, and that's one of the wells we've we've tied in and, and started production on. The other one is the Nilsson. Um, but if, yeah, for those who, who remember that video, that's a pretty good um, illustration of the pressure and, and therefore the quantity uh, of gas that is coming out of the ground at that well. Indeed. And you talk about the pressure there being circa 180 psi on both of them. What just give some context around that? Is that what does that look like for a helium well? Um, so the, the the pressure will will be part of the uh, one of the factors that determines the flow rate. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, fun fundamentally, we're, we're a business. We're looking to to generate revenue. We're looking to make money, um, and we do that by taking gas out of the ground. So what we want to have is a, a as big a flow rate as possible. I'm sort of stating the blind and obvious here. As big a flow rate as possible going through the meter, you know, going through Scout's meter, which they will then sort of test to say, well, this is what's come through, and this is what we're paying you for. So, so the more pressure we've got, in, in theory, the, the better the flow rate. Um, but we're going to find the flow rates are a little bit volatile at first. You know, these are new wells. They're going to take a little bit of time to settle in. I mean, I can have lots of other analogies of, of, of things that just take time to, to settle down once you once you start them up and running. Um, but what we know we've got is good pressure in both wells. Uh, you've seen from uh, you know, the time you and I last spoke that there's certainly methane uh, at, at Smith because you, you, you saw the flame and you know, you sort of, I don't know how well it came across in the video, but you've heard the rush of air. There's a, there's a lot of gas coming out of that um, coming out of that well. So, so we're very optimistic this is going to go um, this is going to go go to plan. Good, good, good. So, so the so the pressure, the psi, is is the flow rate effectively what you expect it to flow. It's not the what's actually in the ground. And I think you, you talk about that later on in, in the news release where you expect that once it will stabilise, you expect or the anticipated helium content is 0.653 percent. So again. Can you give some context around what you think you've got there and also how that ties in sort of to the flow rate if it does? So, so the, the flow rate when we get to it will be measured in, in MCF per day. So it's a thousand cubic feet of, of, of gas, uh, you know, different types of gases per day. Um, and that, that will be determined, you know, by amongst other things by, by the, the pressure. Um, there is a little bit of dewatering to be done, uh, particularly at Smith, which which is underway. You know, that, that that will then free up um, you know, more of the well to produce gas, uh, and this is what I mean by it will take a little bit of time. Um, okay. Helium content. We're going on the uh, competent persons report that was produced for M3 uh, before we we bought the business or before we agreed to buy the business, um, and that was predicting a helium of a little over 0.6%. Um, now, typically, an economic well. You know, assuming decent flow rates is around about 0.3%. Uh, so, you know, it looks like we're very much in the, in the economic territory for helium. You know, this will all be determined you know, once the wells settle down. Uh, we do have higher helium content elsewhere. But what's interesting about the Hugoton, which is where these two wells are, is, is just the scale of it. And the objective really with these, these wells is to prove, well, prove we can drill a well, prove mm. we can take gas out of the ground, but most importantly, connect it to a production facility and the huge advantage I think M3 has is they're right on top of the gathering system uh, that Scout has in the area, which takes this, these are pipelines that take the, the production straight to the Jayhawk uh, gas processing plant, which is only you know, well, actually less than an hour's drive uh, from these two wells. So we're, we're really blessed by the fact that we've, we've got the ability to, to produce what we take out of the ground, you know, meaning we can sell it and turn it into, into money. Yeah, this is what this is what it's all about. <laughs> well, exactly. It, yes, exactly. And and are you in the process of tying into that scout infrastructure now? Then 
it's done. It's, it's, it's done. done. It's, it's done already. So, so, so the way it works, Scout, Scout have a, a gathering system that, that spans across the area. When we drill a well, we would connect our well to to that gathering system. So think, you know, large large rubber hose uh, that attaches the well into the gathering system. Um, in, in both cases, it was a little over a thousand feet uh, to get through the gathering system. In one case, we went through a cornfield. Uh, this is this is Kansas after all. Um, mm. And you know, what, what, once you're onto the gathering system, there is a meter that will determine what you're producing. You know, both in terms of volume and also in terms of what you know what's actually in that volume. Uh, and out of that will come. You know, literally a check at the end of the month for for what we said to scout okay right so scout effectively yeah they're monitoring inflows from lots of different wells across the region owned by different producers and then yes they will determine what they what they owe you so i mean you, you're feeding gas at the moment into that system so you're, you're effectively generating revenue you're waiting until the end of the month to get the first check well, 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 literally, um, I know we're all sort of brought up to believe that UK resource companies or small cap resource companies, and we find things in the ground and then we find a, a partner and we sort of get the partner to farm in and then we hand over the asset. Um, we're trying to break the mould here. We are actually producing, we are actually selling. Uh, we're a small cap or when we complete the, uh, the acquisition of M3, we will be a small cap resources company but a little bit different, actually selling product in, mm. into the market. Um, the other advantage we have is that the Jayhawk facility, which is owned by Scout, I mean, they tell me it does 5% of the world's helium, and I'm going on their numbers. Um, but what I do know is it runs at around about half capacity. So they are hungry, thirsty, whatever right. the right word is, for, for, for more, you know, more gas, you know, whatever that gas may be. So we've got a very willing partner, uh, a very close partner, uh, you know, in, in, you know, both in terms of relationship and also in terms of the proximity to the plant. So as we drill more wells and tie those into the gathering system, you know, we should be able to continue to build on what we've demonstrated over the last, uh, the last few days with Smith & Nilsson. Okay, well, you're definitely moving quickly, as I think you said before. It, it has been rapid progress, really, since, of course, the change over to the, the focus on helium. At the moment, so you know the pressure, you, you, you know the uh, the percentage there. Do you have any idea at the Smith and Nielsen Wells about life of mine or, you know, how long it might last for? Or does that sort of come later? We, we tend to model life on about 30 years um, and, and, and around about sort of a, an 8 to 10% decline rate across the, uh, per, per annum uh, across that period. Um, yeah, the, the big question everyone wants to know is all well, well, what's the starting point? You know, what's the flow rate and, and what's the helium composition? Yeah, so, so we'll get to know that in the coming weeks. Um, I mean, the, I'm actually going out to um, uh, to Dallas and then on to Kansas uh, tomorrow, so I'll, I'll yeah, have, have more idea there when I see the team and also meet with Scout. But okay. if I look at the graph at the moment from the meter, I mean, it's you know, it, it, it's up and down. So it, it's yeah, I can tell you where we're flowing. I can tell you where we're, we're feeding the system, which is what we're meant to do. Um, but yeah, where you pick a point on the graph and say, well, this, this okay. is the flow. Rate. Yeah, we just need to let it settle down a wee bit. Right. Okay. We well, look forward to seeing those and good luck on the, the trip next week. Hopefully, we can catch it or tomorrow, I should say, this week. Uh, we can maybe catch up if uh, there's something interesting if you're visiting site again. In the meantime. What, what's the plan, Nick? Of course, let these flows stabilise. You'd be constantly monitoring, managing that. But drilling further wells, uh, retapping other wells. Yeah, the the, the, the near term plan is is Rost. So we have two locations. One is Huberton, which is where Smith and Nelson are. Uh, the second is, is uh, Fort Dodge, which is where the Rost well is. Um, now that's a smaller area, but what makes Rost really interesting is the helium content. Again, it's a, it's a high pressure well. Uh, it's had a good flow rate. We tested that one at 47 MCF per day, but the number everyone talks about is it's got 5.1% helium. Uh, so that 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 in terms of sort of you know numbers up in lights, I mean that 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 one feels like a, a, a very very exciting prospect. Uh, so I, I'll I'll be out there um, probably at Rost on Thursday uh, this week. I would have thought. Uh, so so we'll see how we're getting on there. But the the, the plan is to bring that into production before too long and as you say we're, we're not the type of people to hang around here we like to get on with things excellent well thank you very much for your time and that update today nick Tullock, the ceo of voyager life many thanks mark if you enjoyed this interview then give us a thumbs up a like or a retweet subscribe to us on youtube or follow us on twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content there's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.